Right, in this video, we're going to be looking at just improving the night model that we've made in another tutorial. Um, a few tweaks and things that we could make to just improving the base and the general shape and so on and so forth. And then if you have the studio version of Cinema 4D, uh, you can join me in updating the model with the sculpting tools that are available, um, just to add that little bit more detail. So what I'm going to do is just start by improving the base. I'm just going to get a few of the edges around the top. I can see that I've already got selected up here. I'm just going to improve the weighting by holding full stop, clicking and dragging left to right. And that just gives that sort of smoother shape along the base. And then I'm going to do the same thing around here. Now, another tool that you could use is the loop select, which is really useful. So if I go to U and L, that allows me to select a loop. But I only want that middle loop. I don't want all of those. So if I look over in my attributes on the right hand side, I've got stop at boundary edge. If I have that selected, you can see that I can now select those loops far easier than I could before. So I'm just going to select those, hold down full stop and click left to right. Just have a look at your other side and you can see that starts to bring out those edges that little bit better. Now I'm just going to grab a couple of the points around there. And I'm just going to stretch them out a bit. And then I'm going to grab those, scale them out and move them a bit. You'll find that box modeling requires a lot of variety of tools. And sometimes it's easier to grab two things and scale them than it is to move two individual elements. And you can see that really starts to get that shape much cleaner down the bottom. Um, but again, it's all down to your general preference about how you want your night model to look, the way it is that you want your shapes to kind of put together. And you can decide, you know, how you want your model to develop. So personal preference or down to, you know, the design that you have for your night model. But I think that looks a little bit cleaner. I'm a bit happier. I think its ears are okay. Um, I might kind of bring its face shape in a little bit so it can look a little less sock puppety. Now just deselecting allows you to kind of have a look and see if there's anything that you would or would not change without the polygons in the way. Okay, I'm relatively happy with that. I think as a sort of base model, it works quite well. Um, maybe have a quick look from the top down view to see how I'm doing. Just change my viewport again, see if that is as circular as I want it to be. Maybe I could uh, edit the edges a little bit around here, around here and here, and then just top view again, scaling out, and you can see that keeps that nice and round the outside. Okay, cool. Right, and there you have just our quick model, quick model improvements. And I shall be looking at sculpting in a second. Right, in this section of the tutorial, we are going to be looking at sculpting in Cinema 4D. Now, sculpting is only available in the studio version of Cinema 4D. So if you have that, then you'll be able to carry along with this tutorial. And if you have the student version, then you should have the uh, studio access pack as well. OK, so with our modeling, um, we've obviously done box modeling in order to get to this point. Sculpting is a much more organic uh, type of modeling. It allows a little bit more freedom, a bit more artistic creativity, I guess, um, without having to sort of like worry where points and polygons are. I find that you really do need to make sure that there is a base mesh that works, it's like we have created here. And then being able to sculpt in Cinema 4D does mean that we don't have to go into any external programs to add the level of detail that we want to get. Before we move on, we need to 
do a few things to our model. Um, now that I know I'm happy with the way its base mesh is created, I'm going to make my symmetry object editable. That way um, I know I have a solid object that works all the way around. So with my symmetry object selected, I'm going to make it editable and you can see that the symmetry object is now turned into a null and I've been left with the cube underneath. So I'm just going to move the cube out of the symmetry and into the subdivision surface and I'm going to delete my symmetry object that I no longer need. Okay, so now if I go to my polygons and then I select my cube, you can see that I now have a polygonal object all the way around. Okay, now it's time to start sculpting. So what I'm going to do is go to my layout and then I'm going to change it from my standard to sculpt. Okay, and you can see that the layout changes. We now have the sculpt tools down the middle and the sculpt layers tab on the right hand side. We still have access to things like objects, takes, content browser and structure at the top, as well as the attributes manager, layers, materials and coordinates down the bottom. Okay, I'm just going to go to my objects there, make sure my cube is selected and you can see that some of those sculpt tools now become active. Okay. So the first thing that you're going to want to do is to subdivide your mesh. Now that's just a simple case of pressing subdivide. And you can see that a little tag now appears next to my cube that says that I now have a sculpt expression tag. And my scene shows me the number of polygons that are now in that scene. Now when it comes to sculpting, you're only going to want to add the level of detail that you really need in order to get the detail of your model out. There's no point in pressing subdivide you know, a few hundred times and watching your polygon count rack up to 300 million because you will almost definitely crash your machine. Okay, so if I just hover over, you can see that my mesh starts to change and that, that round circle there is my brush. If I just zoom in a bit, Okay, you can see that if I click and hold now, my mesh starts to change. And just clicking and holding on my mouse will move that. Same as if I now, if I switch to my graphics tablet and I click and hold, you can see that I get that sort of starts to sculpt out. But what I don't want to do is have to do two halves of this as we did before. And the sculpt tools have a really good thing with them which is that if I click on my sculpt tool and then I go to my attributes manager, I have symmetry available. Okay, now here it asks, where do you want your symmetry to be? Sort of X, Y, Z, sorry, X, Y or Z, X, Y plane, the Z, Y plane or the X, Z plane. Okay, now in this instance, because we've got the Y axis up here and the Z axis going that way, I want the YZ plane, which is across the X. So now if I hover over, you can see that that little white dot represents where the sculpt is going to be on both sides. Okay, you can change the height, sorry, the size of this brush. So if I go to settings, you can change the size this way. So if you want a smaller brush, equally, you can use the square brackets on your keyboard. Left is smaller, right is bigger. So just by sculpting in some detail, okay, you can change the shape quite easily. Now holding control on your keyboard will allow the opposite effect. So if you want to push in some detail and sort of turn your night model into a moomin, um, you can see that that's one way of doing it. So I might actually continue doing that to kind of bring out the nose detail a little bit more and bring out where the eyes are going to be in comparison to the cheekbones. But I'm definitely going to need to sculpt this in a little bit to kind of bring in that nose. Okay. So that's one of the really good tools that you can use. There's also the grab tool if you wish to move some stuff um, and it does literally grab. I'm going to undo that. But as before, if you want the symmetry to work, then you need to add the symmetry to each of the tools that you are going to adapt. So maybe if I want those ears just to be that little bit further apart, or perhaps I want them to be a little bit further back or pointier or further forward, okay, then you've got that kind of option to 
grab and move those about. Okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to just spend a little bit of time working into this model, maybe bringing out some detail. Maybe I'll need to subdivide a few more times. Okay. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to spend some time sculpting. I shall speed up the video so you don't have to watch me do it. And if I have any sort of tools or tips and tricks and stuff, I'll slow it down again and you can hear what I have to say. So you can see that I've started to subdivide again already. Increases my polygon count to 912, purely so that I can start to get some more details in the nostrils. Now you can change the strength and the pressure of your brush so if you want to be you know have a lot of effect in one sort of go then you can increase that pressure um, or you can lower it right down so that it makes very little sort of adjustments to your model meaning that you've got finer control over the shape that it makes. And once again, changing tool, just making sure my symmetry is on, just to kind of smooth out some of the detail that you kind of add in. If you find that the lumps are going a little bit too crazy for you and you want to just sort of define that shape a little bit more. Now you will find that with all sorts of modeling and sculpting, until you practice, you will never get it right first time, okay? Stuff like this takes time to work into and it's not the sort of thing, unless you become exceptionally proficient at, that you can just wander straight into and it will look perfect. It's something that you have to work at, something that you've got to kind of experiment with and play with and look at, see what does work, what doesn't work, you know, where can the details be put in, what do I need to change, you know, does it look right to start with, you block stuff out like I'm doing at the moment with the eye, you know, I'm just sort of trying where I think that the eye is going to work. And I need to kind of adjust the detail in so that I don't end up, you know, looking too bad or disproportionate, but I want to make sure that I'm, I'm getting stuff where I need it to be. So subdivide again, you can see I now have 14,000 polygons. <clears throat> to give you an idea of what that's starting to look like, if I change my settings to ground shading lines, you can see the number of polygons that that now creates <clears throat> and the adjustments that, you know, you can see the movements in those polygons as I add to this. When I show you some of these things, I'll always edit undo if I'm not happy with it. So, you know, Control or Command Z, or you've got the undo button in the top left hand corner. I'm just going to turn off my shading again so I can go back into just seeing what I'm creating. So you can see that the more polygons I add, the slower the machine starts to get. 58,000 polygons and it lags a little bit when it's trying to figure out what it is I'm doing. So maybe I might need to decrease the number of polygons and you can do that just by pressing decrease. But I don't have to worry about this being too anatomically correct or incredibly detailed. It is only a chess piece. But again, it's down to sort of like the details that you want to add in. Okay, so I'm starting to get there. I might just smooth that out a little bit. I might decrease my polygon count so that I'm not quite so laggy.
Now, adding in the main in the middle here, okay, will give you a good example as to why we made our object, our symmetry object, editable and made it one thing. When you use these sorts of tools in Cinema 4D or in any sculpting sort of thing, if you don't have a welded object, which means one object all the way down, and there was still that seam in the middle, you'd have found that everything would have gone a little bit wrong at this point, and your model would have started to split down the middle, which is obviously not something that you want to happen when you're trying to work on this sort of detail. So you could spend hours and hours and hours continually tweaking and working into and developing models such as this. Um, and it's really all down to, as I keep saying, you know, the amount of detail that you wish to put into it or the detail that you're expected to put into it or the time that you have available to you. But for the moment, um, I'm relatively happy with the way that looks. I mean, we can do a little bit more tweaking and I could probably play for hours in sort of playing with that main and we sort of you know, adding in and smoothing out and, you know, just sort of getting in a little bit more detail. But to be perfectly honest, I think I'm happy for this tutorial to kind of give you a demonstration of what it is possible to do with your sculpt. OK, so join me in the next tutorial where we will take all of our models together and we shall start rendering them out.